There are a finite number of uh, exceptions, yeah. For, right, uh, yeah, agreed, okay. sure. So yeah, there are a finite, number of, a finite number of cases you may actually be able to determine the program size complexity of something. But, we're, but for almost all objects, you can't. So the more precise result is if, if you have a, if, you're, if the axioms you're using are n bits in some sense, if, if it's, then you can get up to there. But beyond n bits of program size complexity, you can never be sure what's going on. So in other words, to be able to show that something requires an n-bit program requires n bits of axioms. So there can be a finite number of cases, but that's it. Another way to put it is, what are these n Let's say you want to prove a program is elegant. A program is elegant if it's the most concise program that has the output that it does in that language. So the idea is, if you want to prove a program, and there are a lot of elegant programs, right? Every calculation in any language, there's got to be at least one elegant program for it. There may be several. The most concise program in that language that has the output that it does. What if you want to be sure? If that program is n bits long, to prove that it's elegant requires n bits of axioms. So if the, you know, mostly the axioms that the people use in mathematics in reality, the axiom system of piano arithmetic or mellow frankel set theory, the axiom systems are not terribly long if you, if you actually measure the, how many bits there are. It's really the size and bits of the program, the, the proof checking program that Hilbert had, is the actual measure of, my prog of the complexity of a set of axioms. So if an axioms have n bits of complexity, then it can't settle, it, it can't prove that a program is elegant that's larger than that, even though there are an infinity of elegant programs. You can't prove that a string is, an n bit string is random if. If, if, the, if, the, if the size of the bit string you're trying to prove is random is larger than the bit string that encodes the axioms of the, that you're using. So there are a finite number of exceptions to agree. You're quite right. Yes, sir. Are most real numbers maximally unknowable? Yes. Are most computable real numbers maximally unknowable? No. A computable real number is, minimal, is maximally knowable. It's the other extreme from program size complexity. So pi, you just calculate it. This thing is, uh, no, but most real numbers are, 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 have no structure in this sense. But this is a particular one. You see, to get into trouble, you need to pick out somehow one of them by a mathematical definition that should be simple and natural. Just the observation that almost all real numbers have no structure in this sense, I wouldn't say poses such serious uh, philosophical problems for pure mathematics. But this is a particular one that you define almost constructively. I have a program that calculates it in list that calculates it in the limit from below in one of my books. So, so it's lower computable? Lower computable, but there's no regulator of convergence. In other words, the normal notion of convergence is give me an n, and I'll tell you how far to go to calculate it with n bits of precision. Uh, here I get it in the limit from below, but I never know how close I am. It, it converges very, very slowly, slower than any computable function. Or there's the busy beaver function, if that means anything to you. To get n bits right, requires busy beaver function of n time. And it's impossible to compute any upper bound? Well, there's one is an upper bound. It's a probability, but it's a yeah, number yeah. between 0 and 1. Uh, upper bounds, upper bounds. Uh, that's right. Yeah. To, to get an upper bound that's within n bits requires n bits of axioms. I think it's the same. So all, you can get all lower bounds and no upper bounds, which is the same story with program size complexity. You can get all upper bounds on the size of program size complexity just by exhibiting a program that calculates it that has that size, and you can't get any lower bounds. So it's, it's, it's a way of, of putting them all into one real number. I, that, all that, I'm packaging all of that into one compressed form. This is a crystallized form. Let me tell you what this halting problem is. It's a crystallized form of, condensed form of Turing's halting problem. I've sort of distilled it and crystallized it and compacted it. You make a diamond, you take all the cases and you take all the redundancy out of individual cases of Turing's halting problem. You remove all the redundancy, all the repetitions, and you end up with this crystallized form, maximally compressed form of the Turing's halting problem is what this really is. So Turing, if he were alive, and he could be, he would just be a little old, um, hopefully he would, he would have enjoyed this because this is just a reworking of, in a way, of, of his work. Yes, sir? Could you comment on the basis of chaos theory and a little bit of its application? Well, there is a, a, uh, there's a nonlinear physics, nonlinear dynamics. It's a very successful theory. Physicists like it. And this has no direct connection. 
because I'm talking about lack of structure or structure or logical structure. I'm not, this isn't physics. But there's a lot of empathy. So, in fact, two of the places that I was asked to write articles on this were for special issues of science magazines on chaos theory. You know? So one of them was La Recherche in France, and the other one was The New Scientist. And his, you know, so so they, they bring me in as an outsider because they view this as uh, r related or analogous. But there's really no, no detailed contact. This is logic or information theory, and, and chaos theory is nonlinear dynamics. It's physics. But philosophically, I agree that there are strong links. And you know, the whole tendency of modern, in a way, the way the world is going is to look at randomness, complex systems, we use statistical methods, uh, you know, simple equations, and, and is not the way things are going. They're going to computer modeling where you deal with very complicated systems which have to be dealt with statistically, stochastically. And that's true in many fields. And that just seems to be the way everything is going in, in uh, physics as well as in math and other fields. Yes, sir? Guess what I'd like to do? Let, let me do the following break. Why don't we let people go who want to go, and then uh, the rest of us can come down here and continue. Thanks a lot.